Hey guys, and welcome back to Hardware Unbox. Today, we have for you a three-way mechanical RGB keyboard battle. Now, I've been sent a couple of keyboards over the past few weeks, and I thought the best way to take a look at these guys is to do a battle to the death. And two of these keyboards are reasonably new. So we have the Creative Sound Blaster X Vanguard K08. If you were watching our unboxing series, you would have seen this guy come in the Sound Blaster Weapons Crate a couple of weeks ago. This is a reasonably new keyboard, one of the only ones you can get in the Sound Blaster range. We also have one of the tried and true really high quality keyboards from Razer. It is the Black Widow Chroma V2. Really excited to take a look at this one. And I just figured I'd throw into the comparison here one of my favorite keyboard makers, Corsair. This is a highly rated keyboard and one that on TechSpot at least, we've been recommending for quite some time. It is the K70 RGB rapid fire. So three excellent quality RGB mechanical keyboards here, most of which are designed for gaming. And we're gonna be checking all of these guys out throughout the rest of this video. I'll just quickly dive into the specifications of each of these three keyboards. And we will start with the Razer Black Widow Chroma V2s. This is a $170 keyboard. It comes with three key switch variants, the Razer Green, orange and yellows, at least in my review unit, these are Razer greens. It has a 10 key rollover with a maximum polling rate of one millisecond and it supports up to 80 million keystrokes on those Razer green or any of the Razer key switches. The Creative Sound Blast X Vanguard K08 has Omron Prez switches in it. It has a 26 key rollover, one millisecond max polling rate, 70 million keystroke lifespan. And this is the cheapest of the keyboards here at $140 as a standalone model. And the Corsair K70 RGB Rapid Fire uses Cherry MX Speed RGB key switches, has full key rollover, one millisecond max polling rate, 50 million keystroke lifespan, and it costs $170. So the same price for the Corsair keyboard as the Razer keyboard. And it's also worth mentioning for the K70 series, if you're not a fan of the RGB speed switches from Cherry, you can purchase this in a bunch of other switches, including uh, Cherry MX reds, browns, and blues. So you don't necessarily have to buy the rapid fire, but there are a bunch of high quality K70 models available. We'll start off by talking about the design, and there's a couple of things I usually look for when I'm buying a keyboard, and the first of those is, of course, comfort. I want a very comfortable typing experience, and I think this is where the Razer Black Widow Chroma V2 really shines because it has an extremely plush wrist rest. This was an issue with the first generation Chroma units is that they didn't actually come with a wrist rest at all, uh, but they brought that in for the version two, and it's so plush and so comfortable to use for either typing or gaming that it really blows the offerings from Corsair and Creative out of the water in that regard. The, both the uh, Razer and the Creative keyboards are mostly made of plastic around the body of the keyboard itself. The Creative keyboard probably has the best soft touch keycaps of all three of these keyboards, although it's a pretty tight battle between each of them. Although the general build quality of the Corsair keyboard is probably the best considering it uses metal around the base of the keyboard and has quite a nice soft touch plastic uh, wrist rest there. Not as good as the Razer offering, but still very good nonetheless. As far as the Creative Keyboard goes, feels a little bit cheap in terms of that uh, matte plastic that you use or see here for that wrist rest. So not a huge fan of the Creative design, but I think that the Corsair and Razer ones really hit it out of the park. Of course, the Corsair design is somewhat different because the keys sit above the metal back and that gives it a different sort of look to the keyboard whereas both the Razer and Creative options have the keys inset. Um, the inset option actually gives a better RGB effect. Both of these keyboards use a white backing that reflects light around the keys and I think that gives, it, it makes it a bit more brighter and vibrant for that RGB effect whereas the Corsair keyboard mostly relies on the light coming through the keycaps and also you'll see some glow and reflections around the edges but it's not as prominent as on the Razer or the Creative Options. Of course there's a number of features to talk about with each of these three keyboards as well and surprisingly the Vanguard K08 has the best physical 
feature set of the three keyboards. This is the only keyboard here that has both dedicated media controls, which I think is hugely important in a keyboard, as well as dedicated macro keys and a USB pass-through. So all three of these features you will find on the creative offering. Moving over to the Corsair offering, this does have media keys as well as quite a nice volume control. It also has a USB pass-through, but it doesn't have those dedicated macro keys, which is a bit of a disappointment here, considering that this is a feature only found in Corsair's more expensive K95 keyboards. Um, you can get this feature in both the Razer and the Vanguard keyboards, but you will have to pay more if you want it on the Corsair. So as far as the Razer keyboard is concerned, the Black Widow Chroma V2, like I said, you do get dedicated macro keys, but there are no dedicated media keys. Now for me at least, I tend to use media keys more than macro keys, so the emission on the uh, Black Widow seems to be something that isn't pleasing me too much, but at least you do get media functionality integrated through some additional functions mapped to the F keys on that keyboard. Not as quick to access, but it is still included. And as far as the macro keys on the Corsair keyboard is concerned, you can actually set up macros for every single one of the keys on this keyboard. You can do things like swap key functions, launch applications and all of that, but you will just have to map those macros to existing keys. Something like maybe page up or page down, scroll lock, something like that you can map your macros to, whereas on the other two keyboards you can map those to five dedicated macro keys. So just a bit of a difference depending on what you want there. Moving on to the area that I think you guys will be most interested in and that is the typing experience. This is an interesting comparison because each of these three keyboards includes different keycaps. We'll start off with the Vanguard K08 because these use Omron Prez key switches which I think are the weakest of the three. They have a 1.5 millimeter actuation distance and require 45 grams of force so they're designed mostly for gaming but they do have a tactile bump to them if you look at the uh, information that Creative provides. But I don't think that these give a particular particularly nice tactile feedback. Um, this has been an issue for Omron switches for quite some time. They tend to have a bit of a mushy uh, response when you depress them the entire way, which the other two keyboards don't give you. This makes it closer to a rubber dome keyboard. Uh, it still has a little bit of a mechanical feel, but I just feel that that mushiness that you get when typing isn't as good as you'll find on either the Razer or the Cherry MX key switches. And I can't really recommend this keyboard from the perspective of those key switches, although it is a cheaper keyboard. So if this did have uh, Cherry MX key switches, you would expect to pay more money, but I just, I can't get behind the tactile feedback of the Omron switches too much here. Moving on to the Razer Black Widow Chroma V2, and in my review unit I was equipped with Razer Green key switches, a 1.9mm actuation distance and 50 grams of force. These key switches are mostly designed for typing, they have a distinct clicky feel and they're very loud, they are equivalent to Cherry MX Blue key switches, so extremely quick, clicky, extremely loud and they're not too suited for gaming thanks to their extended travel distance and that clicky feel, but for typing, these key switches provide the best experience of all of these keyboards. I love typing on the Razer Green switches on the Black Widow Chroma V2. If you are more inclined to other types of key switches, there are two other options. Razer Orange key switches, which are a sort of a more silent version of the greens. They're equivalent to Cherry MX Browns. So if you love the Browns, get this keyboard with uh, Razer Orange key switches. There are also the brand new Razer Yellow key switches. These are very fast, 1.2 millimeter actuation distance and 45 grams of force. They are equivalent to the Cherry MX Speed switches that we'll be talking a little bit in the K70 Rapid Fire. Uh, so if you're more inclined to do gaming on your keyboard and you're not interested in a clicky response, it's linear with the Razer Yellows, uh, you should definitely opt for that in the uh, Black Widow Chroma V2. So there's a bunch of options there. I really like the greens, but I think if I was purchasing this keyboard for myself, I'd probably opt for the oranges because I love the Cherry MX Browns. As for the Corsair K70 RGB Rapid Fire, Cherry MX Speed RGB switches here, so 45 grams of actuation force and a 1.2 millimeter actuation distance. They are a very responsive key switch thanks to their linear response, their short travel distance, so they're perfect for gaming, very responsive, they bounce back quickly, they're great for repetitive keystrokes and that's exactly what you'd want for a gaming situation. I think they're a bit too heavy for general keyboard or typing use. Uh, the travel distance isn't as long as I would like if I was typing up extended documents, but again, you can buy the K70 in a bunch of other key switches including 
uh, Cherry MX Blues, Browns, and Reds. So you can get this keyboard in whatever key switch you like, but I think the Rapid Fires are definitely designed for the best gaming experience and the responsiveness of these key switches is fantastic for that particular use case. Of course, it wouldn't be an RGB keyboard battle without talking about some of the RGB functionality that you'll find in each of these three keyboards. It's actually pretty similar across the board in what you can find in the software utilities provided by each of these companies. Uh, all of them have preset RGB sort of patterns that you can set up and use. You'll get the standard waves and ripples and a couple of other cool effects on some of the Corsair and Razer keyboards that you might like playing around with. So for those that don't want to customize the exact keys and exact colors for each of those keys, each of these keyboards provides you with some fantastic presets out of the box. For those that do want to customize, I don't think Creative Software Utility is quite to the standard of the Corsair or Razer utilities at this stage. It does allow you to uh, customize each of the individual keys. So if, for example, you want to illuminate just the keys that are used in your game, you can definitely do that on the Creative Keyboard as with the other keyboards, but it doesn't have some of the functionality such as, it's, it's a bit harder to create the ripple effects or the wave effects to your exact liking on the Creative Keyboard, whereas in the Corsair and Razer utilities, they offer you a ton of options that allow you to do all sorts of effects with your keyboard and create all some effects. Um, the Corsa utility is probably a little bit easier to use than the Razer utility in general for setting up things like customized lighting for each of the keys, but the Razer utility does provide slightly more options in terms of the RGB functionality that you'll get. They also have a thing called Chroma apps on the Razer utility that can override your color uh, options with supported applications for cool effects and integration with apps but the app support list isn't too great at the moment and it's not really what I'd uh, say is a standout feature at the moment, but I guess you know, in the next couple of years, we might see some more uh, application support for the Razer Chroma apps. If I had to recommend one of these keyboards, I think it's unfortunately easy to discount the Creative Sound Blaster X Vanguard K08. Its build quality isn't quite as nice as the other two keyboards. Its Omron key switches, I think, give too much of a mushy feel, and its software utility isn't as mature as what you'll find from either Corsair or Razer. It is the cheaper keyboard in the United States at $140 compared to $170 for the other two options, but I still think it's worth spending the extra money on either the Corsair or Razer options in any case, if you are spending over $100 on a mechanical RGB keyboard. It's actually a mid-tier keyboard in terms of pricing in Australia. This keyboard will set you back 230 Australian dollars at the moment, but the Corsair K70 RGB Rapid Fire is cheaper at just $190. And I think for those of you in Australia, that's a really good deal for this keyboard because the Razer Black Widow Chroma V2 retails for $260. $70 more for the Razer option I think is a bit too much to pay. So for those of you in Australia, the Corsair K70 RGB Rapid Fire or any of the K70 RGB range is a fantastic option at that price. For those of you in other nations though, where these two keyboards, the K70 and the Black Widow, are priced more similarly, as you'll find in the United States with their $170 price, uh, it's actually a really close battle. I reckon that the comfort of the Razer Black Widow is superior to the comfort provided by the K70 thanks to that extremely plush leather-ish foam wrist rest. It's awesome on the uh, Razer Black Widow. It also has probably a slightly better RGB effect if that makes a big difference for you, but the two software utilities between each of these keyboards is very similar. The key switch options, again, very similar, but of course you can choose different key switches for either of these keyboards. Razer Green, Orange, or Yellows are available in the Black Widow, and Cherry MX Speed, Brown, Blue, and Reds are available for the K70 RGB series. So I know the battle is really close, and I think you can't go wrong with either the K70 or the Black Widow, but if I had to make a choice just to end this battle once and for all as my personal preference, I'd probably go for the superior comfort provided by the Razer Black Widow Chroma V2, although I do appreciate the media controls on the Corsair K70, so it's a really tough battle, and again, I don't think you can go wrong with either of those two options. Anyway, that's it for this mechanical keyboard three-way RGB battle. Don't forget there is a written version of this video on techspot.com. Thanks, guys. We will catch you in the next one.